CataractCoach.com. Tilt and chop Faco technique. This makes chopping so easy and it's safe for the cornea. Let me show you how I do it. So we'll first start off with a big capsule rex. It has to be at least five millimeters. In this case, we're gonna use those forceps to measure and I'll show you, I will make a five millimeter rex. Look at this, measured, there it is. Now, here's the key for the hydrox action. Put the camera to the side, the left or the right, here to the right side, slow and steady on the hydrox action, not forceful. And the nucleus will slowly prolapse out of the bag as you inject more and more BSS. There it is, the nucleus tilted on its side. Go to the side port here, and we can just help get that nucleus up a little bit more. There it is. Now, once it's in good position, let's recoat the central endothelium with a small aliquot of viscoelastic. There's some dispersive agent just to protect the cornea. Now, going with the FACO probe on high vacuum, high flow. So let's say 400 millimeters of mercury and 40 cc's a minute of flow. Buzzing into the, nucle into the nucleus right there with the FACO probe, right in the middle. Now, where does the chopper go? around the backside. Hey, keep the eye in primary, doctor. Oh yes, good reminder to myself. And there's the chop right down the middle. You've now separated the nucleus into two halves. You can now get this first half and chop it even a little bit more. And here we go, aspirating these pieces out. Now we're using phaco power modulations. What does that mean? That means we're using a burst mode or a pulse mode. If you don't know the difference, you better go to cataractcoach.com and figure it out. There's a whole series on how to learn these. We're using a variable duty cycle if we use pulse mode. So that means a duty cycle of at most 50% on, 50% off, or maybe 60% off and 40% on. So minimize the total amount of energy here. Now you can see we can buzz into the nuclear pieces and here comes the chopper again, and we can chop this quite easily. And there it is, separating the pieces. Now you have two quadrants. And once you've separated the quadrants, you can emulsify this. Notice that we're doing the phaco at about the iris plane. We're not riding up against the coronal endothelium. That is key. We've protected the coronal endothelium with a dispersive viscoelastic. And again, bevel down here, minimize the phaco energy with those power modulations. And again, last piece coming up, last quadrant, chop it into even smaller pieces. And those again, emulsify pretty easily. And this is a pretty typical cataract. Not your typical soft California cataract, just a pretty average nuclear density here. As the last piece comes up, where does the chopper go? In the safe position. Keep that chopper there to protect the posterior capsule, the smooth back end of the chopper. And then now, there we go, last little piece. We're just about done. No, oh, one little maybe fragment there coming out of the eye. Time for the IA probe. Now, did I tell you about our podcast? The top podcast in all of ophthalmology, it will teach you how to be a more successful ophthalmologist. I am absolutely serious. You will thank me later. Now, cortex removal here. I just want to finish up the rest of the case here. We can kind of get to it. And at this point, let's, we've sped the video up to 2x. Cleaning up the cortex. I just want to show you the end of the case to show you that beautiful capsular axis. And so, no, you're not going to damage the capsular axis if you have at least a 5 millimeter diameter. Now, if you have a 4 millimeter diameter capsular axis and a good amount of nuclear density, you're not going to be able to get the nucleus to prolapse parsed out of the bag. Tilt and chop's not going to work there. So here comes the lens. Looks like a toric monofocal lens going in the capsule bag. We'll get that position. And you'll see at the end here, we know that's a six millimeter optic. And I'll show you that the rexus will overlap for a full 360 degrees. So it is correct. Nicely done rexus. Now let's go behind the optic and move viscoelastic, especially for these toric lenses. We don't like to leave viscoelastic behind the optic because that can allow the lens to misrotate out of position. So now getting that dialed in, making sure it's where we want it. There are, if you look carefully, some marks on the cornea. We're lining up the torque IOL marks from the IOL on those marks on the cornea, and that'll do it. End of the case here, let's hydrate the incision. We can center up that lens a little bit, do some final positioning, and now you know how to do tilt and chop, and you gotta try it, and I promise you're gonna love it. And then remember, check out that podcast everywhere where you find your podcast services.